بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم إننا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشفع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome my brothers and sisters to another class explaining the book entitled Mishkat al-Masabih by al-Khatib al-Tibrizi rahimahu Allah ta'ala and we are currently in Kitab al-Da'awat Babu Dhikr Allah Azza wa Jalla wa Taqarrubi ilayhi the chapter of Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jalla and drawing near to him. May Allah make us among those who remember him often and draw us all close to him. Ameen. Babu dhikrillah, the chapter of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First, before we go on to explain the ahadith contained within this chapter, and of course we said al-fasl awwal, contains a hadith collected by Imam Bukhari or Muslim or both of them. Before we go on to those hadith, let's take a moment to explain the word dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah. The term dhikrullah, whenever it is mentioned, then there are a few intended meanings. The first of which is making remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jalla using selective wordings. For example, you say hasbi Allah, وَنِعْمَ wakil or أَسْتَغْفِرُ la ilaha illallah نَعْمْ الْبَاقِيَةُ الصَّالِحَاتِ نَعْمْ This is also included within like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says الْمَالُ وَالْبَنُونَ زِينَةُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْبَاقِيَةُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا That wealth and children are the adornment the zina of this life, of this worldly life. However, but the everlasting good deeds are far better with your Lord in hope, in reward, and in hope. What are the al-baqiyatu salihat? The salaf of the ummah, they differed, as, well, they provided different tafasir, different explanations over what is intended by al-baqiyatu salihat. For example, we have a narration in which Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma and Sa'id ibn Jabir rahimahullah, they said that the intended meaning is as-salawatul khams. It is the five prayers. And then we have another narration from Ibn Abbas himself radiallahu anhuma where he said that al-baqiyatul salihat is the statement subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar. Now, two different narrations from Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Also, we have the narration of Uthman bin Affan where he said al-baqiyatu salihat is the statement la ilaha illallah wa subhanallah walhamdulillah wallahu akbar wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. And this is supported by the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa where he explicitly said Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar min al-baqiyatu salihat that these phrases are from al-baqiyatu salihat and ala kullin when we look at the interpretations of the salaf this is a form of differing that is termed as ikhtilafu tanawwar and not ikhtilafu tadad Ikhtilaf Tadad, if you studied Usul Tafsir with us, we went over this concept and the differences between them. And Ikhtilaf Tadad is where you have a complete contradiction where only one of the statements can be correct. As for Ikhtilaf to know word, then this is the Salaf explaining the word from one of its aspects. They're mentioning one interpretation included within that word. And this is a this is a this is a, an example of this because Ibn Abbas at one point he explained it as, be, as being a salawatul khams. 
And in another instance, he explained al baqiyatu salihat as being subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wallah, ilaha, wallah, wallah, akbar. Does this mean that it's a difference of opinion? Does it mean that there's a contradiction? La. In one instance, he provided a salawat al khams for a particular reason. Perhaps the questioner, right? Perhaps the questioner had issues or needed encouragement into pray, needed encouragement to pray the five prayers. So Ibn Abbas mentioned the five prayers in this instance to encourage them to establish the salah. And perhaps another instance, Ibn Abbas wanted to highlight the virtue of these four phrases, subhanAllah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha, wa akbar. Naam. And there are many other reasons as to why the salaf would give different interpretations of a particular word. And we mentioned all this in our usul tafsir course. Tayyib. So this is what's known as ikhtilaf at we should We should know that al-baqiyatu salihat is a comprehensive word, which includes all various types of righteous deeds. And it's something that we should, as the Prophet he commanded, istakfiru min al baqiyatu salihat, be abundant in. We should do it often. Naam? We should make these adhkar, dhikr of Allah, often. Tayyip. So this is one meaning of dhikr Allah when it's used in the legislation. Yani making remembrance of Allah using selective wordings. Another meaning of dhikr Allah is that it can refer to being persistent in performing acts of ibadah, acts of devotion, like reciting the Qur'an. This is a form of dhikr of Allah. Reading hadith of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is a form of a dhikr of Allah. Now, it's not the saying of la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Now, it's not the same. However, it's still considered to be dhikr Allah, reading hadith, studying knowledge. Gathering to review knowledge. Naam, this is also a form of dhikr Allah. Naam, um, dhikr of Allah is not restricted to those previous phrases that we mentioned. And Imam Nawi, he mentioned in his beneficial book that I advise everyone to read, Al Adhkar. He says this, and he says, I'lam, to know that the fadilat of dhikr is not in the tasbih, and the tahlil, and the tahmid, and the tabir, and the That the virtue of dhikr is not exclusive, is not restricted to these phrases. Yani a tasbih saying subhanallah, a tahleel saying la ilaha illallah, a tahmeed saying alhamdulillah, wa takbir saying Allahu Akbar, and any other similar phrases like that, like la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil, ila akhirihi. The virtue of dhikr are not restricted to these particular wordings. In fact, he said, بَلْ كُلُّ عَامِلٍ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَ بِطَاعَةٍ بِطَاعَةٍ فَهُوَ ذَاكِرٌ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَ Rather, anyone who does an act of obedience for the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is considered to be ذَاكِرٌ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَ as someone who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam? And then he says, كَذَا قَالَ سَعِيدُ بُنْ جُبِيرٌ this is what Sa'id ibn Jubair, he mentioned, may Allah be pleased with him, and other others than him, other than him from the scholars of Islam. Allah Akbar. Showing that dhikr wallah is awsa. So you simply attending classes, even when you attend classes like fiqh or usul of fiqh or mustalah hadith or learning the language. Arabic language, learning how to read, understanding language and its meanings. Naam, this, although you're not mentioning Allah specifically at every moment, naam, and you're not saying Allah Akbar, subhanAllah, every moment, you simply going to those classes is considered to be dhikrullah. Of course, if the intention is correct, right? Because what is the ultimate purpose as to why you're going to those classes? It is to remember Allah. Even though you don't explicitly remember Allah at every moment in those gatherings, Naam, you still get the reward. And the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expensive. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Naam. So take advantage of those opportunities. Tayyib. Um, 
and Ata, رحمه الله تعالى, he mentioned this as well. He said, مجالس الذكر هي مجالس الحلال والحرام. That the majalis of dhikr, the gatherings, the sittings of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the sittings of al-halal wal-haram. Yani discussing the rulings of things being halal or haram. Yani fit classes. كيف تشتري وكيف تبيع How do you buy? How do you sell? كيف تصلي وكيف تصوم? How do you pray? How do you fast? وتنكحوا وتطلق How do you marry? How do you divorce? What are the rulings contained to that? كيف تحج? How do you perform hajj? وأشباه ذا هذا And anything similar to this These gatherings where you're mentioning these ahkam are forms of dhikrullah Allahu Akbar are forms of dhikrullah نعم مسألة ذكر can be made on the tongue and it can also be made in the heart. It can be made on the tongue and it can be made in the heart. The evidence for this is mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran where he mentions towards the end of Surah Ali Imran, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ he mentions that they're the believers, they meant they remember Allah standing and sitting and on their sides and on their sides. And they contemplate, they reflect, they ponder over the creations of the heavens and earth. And as a result, subhanAllah, they say, Oh our Lord, you did not create this in vain without any purpose. Subhanaka, free, perfect you are in every single way. Subhanaka, and you're free from all imperfections. Save us from the punishment of the fire. Save us from the punishment of the fire. The shahid of the verse, the benefit of the verse is a statement. That he mentions that they ponder and reflect over the heavens and earth. And pondering a tafakkur happens within the heart. It happens and occurs within the heart. And in the beginning of the verse, he says, those who remember Allah, يذكرون الله. And then he mentioned a type of remembering Allah, which is pondering over the creation, the heavens and earth. Scholars derive from this verse that the best form, the best form of dhikr, and the best thing you can, or the best thing you can make dhikr of is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his might and power. Yani reflecting over his creation, how he created the heavens and the earth, is a reflection over Allah, is a reflection, is reflecting over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his, and his majesty and his might and his power and his ability. Now, I mean, this is the best form of dhikr, to think about Allah. Now, mas'ala, question, which type of dhikr? So we mentioned that dhikr can be done on the heart or on the tongue and in the heart. Which of the two do you think is the best form of dhikr? Which one? Which of the two do you think is the best form of dhikr? What do you all think? Bismillah. Well, I kind of wrote it on the screen already, but. Tayyib. <laughs> Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in his beneficial book called Al-Wabil al-Sayyib, another beneficial book that I advise everyone to read because it speaks about uh, the essence of making thikr to Allah Azza wa Jalla and many, many things that will encourage you and strengthen your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jalla and encourage you to make more remembrance of Him. He mentions, وَهِيَ تَكُونُ بِالْقَلْبِ وَالْلِسَانِ تَارَةً that dhikr can occur with the heart and the tongue so at sometimes. And that's the best form of dhikr. So the best form is to combine between your heart and your tongue. And then he says that dhikr can occur within the heart by itself. And this is the second level, yani that which is not first place or second place, the second most virtuous. وَبِالْلِسَانِ وَحْدِهِ تَارَةً وَهِيَ الدَّرَجَةُ الثَّالِثَةً And the last 
is just making dhikr on the tongue. طيب. And then he says, فَأَفْضَلُ ذِكْرِ He repeats, فَأَفْضَلُ ذِكْرِ مَا تَوَاطَعَ عَلَيْهِ الْقَلْبُ وَالْلِسَانِ And the best form of dhikr is when the heart and the tongue are combined together. They are in accordance to one another. You make dhikr with both of them together. نعم. طيب. So the best is when the heart and tongue is combined. طيب. What about heart by itself and tongue by itself? Yani, which of the two is better? If you were to make dhikr of the heart by itself or dhikr of the tongue with the tongue by itself, he says, وَإِنَّمَا كَانَ ذِكْرُ الْقَلْبِ Naam, He says that the, making dhikr of the heart is more virtuous. Why is that? He mentioned that earlier. That's وَهِيَ أَدَّرَجُ الثَّانِيَ أَدَّرَجَةُ الثَّانِيَ صح? Why is that? He says, وَإِنَّمَا كَانَ ذِكْرُ الْقَلْبِ وَحْدُهُ أَفْضَلُ مِنْ ذِكْرِ الْلِسَانِ وَحْدِهِ Making dhikr with the heart is better than making dhikr with the tongue by itself because لِأَنَّ ذِكْرَ الْقَلْبِ Because dhikr of the heart يُثْمِرُ الْمَعْرِفَةِ it, it produces and it yields knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you think with your heart. It leads to reflecting over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thus obtaining, yani reflecting over Allah azza wa jalla, having knowledge of Allah azza wa jalla. And it also, you heed al muhabba and it incites, it, it excites, it excites love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa yuthiru al haya and as a result, it inspires shyness because once you know who Allah is, you will naturally become shy. Subhanallah, that you're before al malikul qahar. Subhanallah. Wa yaba'athu ala al makhafa. And it also brings about fear of Allah, without a doubt. And it invites towards being more conscious, more aware of Allah Azza wa Jalla. It brings about more uh, consciousness and awareness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And it prevents a person from being deficient in their acts of obedience and the salawat. Right? It prevents you from being uh, deficient in those acts of, of worship. Okay. And also being negligent in falling into sins and disobedience, acts of disobedience. Now, and then he said, so these are these are from the benefits of making dhikr with the heart. It brings about all these things we mentioned. And then he said, and remembrance on the tongue doesn't bring about yani by itself. I'm talking about by itself, it doesn't bring about the same effects as dhikr in the heart. So, so its fruits are considered to be weak. The fruits of it are considered to be weak, showing that making dhikr on the heart by itself is better than the tongue. But the best thing that we should do is combine between both. Now. The author, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he narrates the hadith. The hadith on Abi Hurairata wa Abi Sa'id. These are two hadith. These are two hadith. Hadithan combined into one. Annahuma qala, that both of them they said, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yaq'udu qawmun yadhkuruna allaha illa haffathum al-malaika wa ghashiyathum al-rahma wa nazalat alayhum al-sakinah wa dhakarahum allahu fi man indahu rawahu muslim. What could be translated to mean that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, people will not sit remembering Allah without it, without the angels surrounding them, mercy covering them, peace descending on them, and Allah mentioning them among those who are with him. Collected by Imam Muslim, rahimahullah. طيب. In this hadith, the Prophet وسلم, he said, لا يقعد قوم That people will not sit. People will not sit. So the virtues mentioned in this hadith is it only restricted to those who are sitting? Only those who sit? Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions a ta'biru bil qu'udi lil ghalibi kama huwa zahir. That the phrase, yani yaq'udu, okay, la yaq'udu, it was only mentioned, yani sitting was only mentioned because that is what is normally done in a gathering of dhikr. Many times, for the most part, people, when they gather to remember Allah, they're sitting in a class, sitting in the masjid. Naam? So this is why 
لا يقعد is used in the hadith. However, it's not restricted to only sitting. It can include standing as well. If somebody, if you gather with your friends, standing, for example, outside of the masjid, right? Outside of the store, outside of someone's home. Now, this, the, the virtues mentioned in this hadith of حَفَّتْهُمُ uh, الْمَلَائِكَةَ The malaika, the angels uh, descending around them, surrounding them. إِلَىٰ أَخِرِهِ Then they also obtain this virtue as well. Now, um, because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said لَا يَقْعُدُ He explicitly mentioned لا يقعدو, Sitting, they do not sit. Scholars say that the best form of dhikr is done when a person is sitting. They derive from this that the best form of dhikr, the best hay'a a person should be in is that they should be sitting. Why is that? Because when a person is sitting, that allows all their senses to be focused on this one task, which is remembering Allah. As opposed to walking, if you're walking, of course, you're, your mind, you're trying to juggle between two different things, which is remembering Allah and focusing on where you're walking. Now, so you're, you're focused not 100% there. As opposed to when you're sitting, you're only focusing on dhikr Allah, right? Also, when you're sitting, you're only looking what is in front of you, okay? And your mind is not distracted with the moving objects, the cars, the horns, maybe, right? The ambulance, right? If you're in New York City, you hear a lot of ambulance sounds, a lot of police sounds. Now, these things are not distracting you. But if you're sitting down, subhanAllah, you only focus on one thing. Naam, you're not busied with anything other than dhikr. Tayyib. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, لا يقعد قوم يذكرون الله. In another hadith, I'm sure everyone here has memorized it, especially if you memorize 40 hadith Nawi, it mentions, مجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة وغشيتهم الرحمة وحفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله في من عنده that there's no people who gather في بيت من بيوت الله it says في بيت من بيوت الله in a house there's no people who gather in a house from the homes of Allah reciting the book of Allah studying it between themselves except that the sakina descends upon them and rahma and rahma envelops them and the angels surround them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these people who are remembering him studying the book of Allah in the Bayt and the Buyutillah with those who are with him. Now, this hadith says fi baytim in Buyutillah. So are these virtues specific to only those who are in the masjid? Some scholars say nam that the virtues are only specific to those in the masjid, while other scholars say no. Rather, it includes any place, any place, any place where the Muslims gather to remember Allah. And I remember, subhanAllah, this is one of the first, this is the first question I asked our Shaykh Muhammad Ali Adam in Ethiopia, may Allah have mercy on him, when I first met, well, one of the first times I met him, uh, subhanAllah, when I first got here to Saudi Arabia, one of the, one of the students graduated and he left and he was and his apartment became available. So being new, I didn't really know how to find apartments or whatever. So I just took his apartment. I just took his apartment without knowing, you know, the area or anything else who lives there or whatever. So subhanAllah, when I moved in, I went to the masjid, a local masjid, which was very close. And I prayed in there. And when I made the taslim, you know, when I made the taslim to the left-hand side, I saw... A person, a sheikh who looked very familiar. At that time, I only saw Sheikh Muhammad Ali Adam a couple times, a couple, a few times. Naam. But when I looked to my left, subhanAllah, he looked very, very familiar. So I went to him after the salah, after some people left. I went up to him because the sheikh, he would sit down and make dhikr, right? He wouldn't leave immediately, but he'll make dhikr and many of the people will leave the masjid. He'll still be in the masjid with his sons, uh, Abdul Jalil and others, Allah, making dhikr. And his son will, will patiently wait for him. SubhanAllah. This is one thing about the Sheikh that really amazed me. How his sons were like always with him. And they will always wait for him and push him around. When he got older, he had he could only move through you know, a wheelchair. 
and his sons will be him 24-7. 24-7, his sons will be with him. May Allah reward them. May Allah reward them and allow us to reach this level and surpass this level of birru al I mean, Al-Kullin, so I went up to him and I asked him, I said, are you Sheikh Muhammad Ali Adam Ethiopia? Like that, sorry. <laughs> and uh, subhanAllah, he said, naam. And I was just, I just so start, like I was really starstruck because it's a mountain of hadith. So I was like, subhanAllah, I didn't realize you lived here. You live right close, to, like literally across the street from me. And so I, I, so, so when he said yes, so I'm, I'm trying to, uh, you know, think about something to ask him, you know, being a little nervous. But the first thing that came to my head was this hadith. Alhamdulillah, that's the first thing that came to my head. So I asked him about this hadith. Uh, when the Prophet said, Is this restricted? Yani the virtues mentioned in this hadith, restricted to only those who are in the masjid? Or can it be applied to other, other places as well? And the Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala, uh, Rahimahullah, he passed away, may Allah have mercy on him. Um, he mentioned that, no, it's not restricted to the masjid. Uh, and the, the reason for it is because if you take a look at the hadith, he, the Prophet Sallallahu did not say, fi masjid min masajidillah. Rather, he said, fi baytin min buyutillah. And the bayt min buyutillah, the reason why he mentioned this, in order to include any building, any place that has been built for the purpose of Allah, Azza wa Jalla, min al-masajid wal madaris, right, from the masajid, it includes the masajid, and it also includes uh, educational institutions, like a jamia university, like a building that was, you know, a school, um, an institute. Now, those places also are included when it comes to the virtues mentioned in this hadith. Now, and this is what the Shaykh mentioned, may Allah have mercy on him, and uh, gather us all in fair dose and reunite us all in fair dose a'la, bi ghayri hisab wa la adab. Now, um, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "La yaqudu, la yaq, la yaqudu, qawm yadkurun Allah, remembering Allah, illa hafathum al malaika, except that the angels surround him or surround them. Wa ghashiyatum al rahma, and mercy covers them." وَنَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ And that peace descends upon them. Allahu Akbar. Naam, without a doubt. That when you attend the majalis of dhikr, the gatherings of dhikr of Allah, there's a sense of peace and mercy and tranquility you find in it that you can never find anywhere else. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Remembering Allah, ikhwani, akhawat, provides a, for, a, a form of tranquility and peace that cannot be found anywhere else. This is why the majalis of dhikr are referred to as rawdat al-jannah, the gardens of paradise. If you want to experience a piece of paradise, then go to the majalis of dhikr, the places where classes are given, and you, you will taste that peace. May Allah grant us all this feeling, ameen, and grant us all firdaus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطَمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ that those is it not the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which the hearts find rest without a doubt and Allah mentioned in the Quran huwa allazi anzala as-sakinata fi qulub al-mu'minina liyazdadu imanan ma'a imanihim that he is the one who sends down sakina tranquility to the hearts of the believers in order to increase them in iman with the iman they already have, subhanAllah. So going to the majalis of dhikr is a means of having your iman increase. Allah will send down sakina to the hearts of the believers and increase them in their iman, subhanAllah. So if a person has an issue with iman, low iman, then the solution is to go to the majalis of dhikr, go to classes, be with the righteous, be with the righteous, and it will increase their iman. Now, of course, the, the, the places of dhikr, the places of classes that teach the clear Qur'an wa sunnah and not the places where there is innovation, where there is people speaking out of their with their desires, people who are 
يعني رويبضة نعم and the متعالمون المتعالمون نعم the self-taught the small people نعم these places you should avoid but rather be with the people the true people of knowledge to, to taste this feeling and Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimullah Ta'ala Subhanallah he has a beautiful statement in his book Madaraj Al-Salikin where he says that the word he said وَقَدَ ذَكْرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى السَّكِينَةَ فِي كِتَابِهِ فِي سِتَةِ مَوَاضِعِ that Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned the word Sakina, tranquility, peace, in his book in six places. In six places. Then he goes on to mention the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Tawbah. He mentions it Tawbah twice. He mentions in Surah Al-Fatih. He mentions in Surah Al-Fatih uh, two times, or actually three times. He mentions once in Surah Al-Baqarah, two times in Surah Al-Tawbah, and three times in Surah Al-Fatih. And then after mentioning the ayat, he said, وَكَانَ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ إِبْنُ تَيْمِيَّ رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِذَا اشْتَدَّتْ عَلَيْهِ الْأُمُورُ قَرَأَ آيَاتِ السَّكِينَةِ That whenever Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, whenever any of his affairs became difficult upon him, then he would recite these ayat that mention a sakina, these six ayat that mention a sakina. And then he said, وَقَدَ جَرَّبْتُ أنا أيضا قراءة هذه الآيات عند اضطراب القلب. And I also tried, I you know tried this out to recite these verses that mention a sakina whenever I felt anxiety or worry in my heart. فرأيت لها تأثيرا عظيما في سكونه وطمأنينته. And I found that it had a tremendous impact. As it relates to the tranquility of his heart, the calmness of his heart, and bringing serenity to his heart. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Simply reciting these ayat that mention Sakina allows an individual to feel peace and tranquility in their heart. Now, and this is something that he experienced himself. Subhanallah bihamdihi. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهُ And Allah mentions them, those who remember him in those gatherings, among those who are with him. Among those who are with him. Now, uh, SubhanAllah, think about this statement. It's a tremendous statement by Allah Azza wa We'll expound on it more later on. As we progress, but just think about Allah mentioning us to His angels. That is a tremendous honor, Ikhwani wa Akhawat. Right? Think about how you feel if you were to be singled out by your teacher in the class and praised by your teacher, okay, or by this principal in front of the whole school of graduation. How do you how honor how honorable you feel? Now, or if you're singled out by, at work by your boss, or even by your parents when your parents boast about you in front of others, how honored you feel. Now, I mean, this is from creation. So imagine how you should feel what knowing that Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions you to the angels. Allah Akbar mentions you to the angels. And that should encourage us to be diligent in attending majalis or dhikr and to attend it often. Now, may Allah grant us success to be with the righteous. I mean, the next hadith we have. On the authority of Abu Huraira. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال أنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يسير في طريق مكة فمر على جبل يقال له له جمدان فقال سير هذا جمدان سبق المفردون. Some of them they pronounce pronounce it المفردون and some of them they pronounce it المفردون. قالوا وما المفردون يا رسول الله Abu Huraira narrates عنه, that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was traveling on the way to Mecca and he came to a mountain called Jumdan. And he said, Go on, this is Jumdan, and the Al Mufaridun or Al Mufridun have gone ahead. When he was asked, Who? Or what are the Mufarridun? Or who are the Mufridun? Naam. And the Sahaba, when they said Mahir, they intended, what is this Sifa? What is this description of those who are described with, 
you know, this description. This is why they said Matt. Referring to how do we obtain this same sifa, this same description, so we could be among the mufarridun. This is why the word ma was used instead of men. He replied, Sallallahu those men and women who make frequent, frequent remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the intent here are those who الَّذِينَ تَفَرَّدُوا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَانْفَرَدُوا وَاعْتَزَلُوا عَنِ النَّاسِ التعبد. Those who have secluded themselves for the purpose of they secluded themselves from the people for the purpose of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worshipping Allah azza wa jalla They spend most of their time remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said here أَذَاكِرُونَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا كَثِيرًا When is remembering Allah considered to be Kathir, is there a dhabit? Is there something like a principle or a guideline to show us that if you reach this level, you're considered to be among those who mention and remember Allah kathiran? Some of the salaf they've mentioned, they've explained what are the parameters needed in order to be considered among those who remember Allah often. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said, Kathratu dhikri yahsulu bi dhikri fi adbar salati wal ghudui wal ashi wa fil madaji wa kulla ma staykada min nawmihi wa kulla ma ghada wa aw raha min manzinihi. That a person is considered to remember Allah abundantly if they remember Allah at the end of the prayer. So after they pray, they don't just get up and leave. Get up and leave and run to, to reach the exit of the masjid. Rather, they remember Allah, make the adhkar at the end of the salah, and at night, and in, and in morning, and at night. And they remember Allah in the, e in the morning, in the evening. And they remember Allah fil madaji, yani in the places where they sleep, in their beds when they're about to sleep. And every time they wake up from their sleep, they remember Allah. And every time they exit and enter their homes, they remember Allah. This is the... Uh, Parameters placed by Ibn Abbas. Mujahid, he said, he said that remembering Allah, it occurs that when a person remembers Allah standing and sitting and laying down. Yani when they do these actions, they mostly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Ata, uh, he mentions that it is بِإِقَامِتُ الصَّلَوَاتِ الْخَمْسِ مَعَ حُقُوقِهَا It is by establishing the five prayers with their rights. Yani fulfilling it the way it's supposed to be fulfilled. Now, Ibn Salah, he mentioned it is بِالْمُوَاضَبَةِ عَلَى الْأَذْكَارِ الْمَأْثُورَةِ الْمُثْبِتَةِ صَبَاحًا وَمَسَاءً فِي الْأَوْقَاتِ وَالْأَحْوَالِ الْمُخْتَلِفَةِ لَيْلًا وَنَهَارًا that it is to be persistent in performing the adhkar, those adhkar that have been authentically attributed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the morning and evening, during the different days and times and situations, day and night. Yeah, you throughout the whole entire day. You make those adhkar. Um, and one of the most beneficial books if you want to learn these adhkar, is a book called Al Adhkar by Imam Nawi. Also, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he calls he has a book gathering authentic adhkar from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Ad'iyah in his book called Al Kalim Al Tayyib. Also, from the more contemporary scholars is Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badr, Hafizahullah, in his book Fid. Um, Fiqh al wal adhkar. Naam. The fiqh of making supplications and adhkar, remembrances of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, Shaykh Abdullah Muhsin al Abad, his father, Hafidhullah, has a small booklet as well, gathering these adhkar and adi'ya, and has been translated by our beloved brother, Abu Shayba Riyad, a student here in the master's program at Umar Qura University. He translated the book and Inshallah, we'll send it after class. It's something that I advise everyone to download and read on a regular basis, memorize a new dua every day, and recite it on a daily basis, especially on the day of Arafah. May Allah allow us to reach that day 
and forgive us for our sins. I mean, طيب. the next hadith is narrated on behalf of Abu Musa and Abi Musa, yani al Ash'ari, radiallahu anhu qal, anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mathalu ladhi yadhkuru rabbahu, wal ladhi la yadhkuru mathalu al hayi wal mayit. That the one who remembers his Lord and he who does not remember his Lord are like the living and the dead. Subhanallah bihamdi. Yani, those who do not remember Allah Azza wa Jalla are considered as deceased, dead people. Allah mentioned in the Quran, Awaman kana maitan, fa ahyay nahu, wajal nalahu, nura yam shi bihi fin nas. Kaman methanuhu fidulumati. Laysa bi kharijim minha. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Awaman kana maitan. Allah says that those who are dead, fa ahyay nahu, then we gave them life. And we gave them life and we gave them a light. Which they can walk among the people with it. Like are, are they like the ones like the ones who are in darkness, complete darkness, which they can never emerge from it. This is a reference to the one who was not Muslim. And Allah gave them life by giving them Islam, giving them the light of Iman. Okay? SubhanAllah. So before they were Muslim, they were considered to be dead. Dead, lifeless, deceased. SubhanAllah bihamdi. Why? Because they don't have Iman. They don't have Islam. They don't have remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah calls them as being deceased people. Corpse. SubhanAllah. And Ibn al-Qayyim, ta'ala, he mentioned that he heard his shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahum, rahimahum Allah, saying, الذِّكْرُ لِلْقَلْبِ مَثَلُ الْمَاءِ لِلْسَّمَكِ That remembrance for the heart is like water for the fish. فَكَيْفَ يَكُونُ حَالُ السَّمَكِ إِذَا فَارَقَ الْمَاءِ So what will be the condition of the fish when it is separated from the water? SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. This is how we should feel when we don't make our adhkar, when we forget to make our adhkar. We should feel that our hearts are dead if we missed our morning supplications, if we missed our evening supplications, if we missed our adhkar after the salawat. We should feel dead, naam? Because dhikr gives life to the heart. The Prophet said here, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ he likened the one who remembers his Lord as being a person who is living. And the one who does not remember his Lord as a deceased corpse, someone who is dead. Tayyib. What is the connection between living and making dhikr? Yani what is the wajud tashbih? Here we see an instance of a tashbih, there being a comparison. What is the connection between the one who is living and the one who's making dhikr. What is the wajud tashbih, the connection between them both that makes it similar to make this comparison? Yani, the living individual nourishes his body with food, naam, with drink, right? He's constantly nourishing his body so he won't die. Likewise, the dhakir nourishes his heart so it would not die. That's the connection. They both are nourishing themselves. So that they can stay alive. Khairan. So both the body and the heart, they benefit or it benefits from the nourishment and thus is alive. As opposed to the one who is dead, who doesn't make any um, remembrance of Allah, doesn't nourish his heart. He is like someone who is in the grave, dead, khalas. Doesn't benefit whatsoever. Naam. The Prophet of Allah said in the next hadith, or the next hadith he mentions, Anabi Hurairata radiallahu anhu, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الله تعالى أنا عند ظن عبدي بي وأنا معه إذا ذكرني فإن ذكرني في نفسه ذكرته في نفسي وإن ذكرني في ملأ ذكرته في ملأ خير منهم متفق عليه which could be translated to mean that Allah سبحانه وتعالى said so this is a hadith قدسي 
This is Hadith Qudsi. Now, I am present when, when my servant thinks of me, and I am with him when he remembers me. If he remembers me inwardly, I shall remember him. And if he remembers me among people, I shall remember him among people. Yani fi in gathering is a better translation. I remember him in a gathering who are better than they. Fi in khayrin minhum. In a gathering. Excuse me. This is similar to another hadith. Hadith Qudsi. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ مِنِّي شِبْرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ ذِرَاعًا That he stated, whoever draws close to me by the length of a hand, I will draw close to him by the length of an arm. وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ مِنِّي ذِرَاعًا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ بَاعًا And whoever draws close to me by the length of an arm, I will draw closer to him by the length of a fathom. And whoever comes to me walking, I will come to him running. And whoever meets me with enough sins to fill the earth, not associating any partners with me, I will meet him with as much forgiveness. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Now. And this shows the virtue of dhikr of Allah. And this hadith will come later on in the chapter. We'll explain it there or mention some points related to it. But here we see the virtue of making dhikr of Allah. And that if we make dhikr of Allah, Allah remembers us. Allah says, so remember me and I will remember you. And this points to a beneficial principle, al jaza'u min jins al-amal, that the reward is based on the action. If you spend your time for the sake of Allah, pleasing Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah will reward you. Allah will give you. You remember Allah, Allah will remember you. Naam? And there's a beautiful statement by Ar-Rabi' ibn Anas where he said, Inna Allah dhakirun man dhakarahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certainly remembers those who remember him. Subhanallah. Wa za'idun man shakarahu. And he increases the blessings of those who give thanks to him, to those who show gratitude to him. For his endless bounties. And he punishes those who deny his bounties. Those who are ungrateful for his bounties. Those who disbelieve in him. May Allah protect us all. I mean. Now, so this is something that we should do often. Knowing that Allah will remember us. And uh, this is a beautiful line of poetry. Mentioned by Abu Ishaq al, al Ilbiri, the famous Andalusian poet, uh, where he said to his son, he advised his son, And remember Allah often on the norm, make this something normal, make it constant. Remember Allah on the earth. Often, right? Make it your custom, customary practice, so that you may be remembered in the heavens whenever you are mentioned, so that you may be remembered in the heavens. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Allah, uh, in this hadith Qudsi, in dhakarani, he says, and if they remember me fi mala'in in a gathering, dhakartuhu fi mala'in khayrin minhum, then I make mention of him or them to. Uh, in a gathering better than them, better better than the gathering that they were in, better than they. Yani, who are they? Allah makes mention to who? Yani, who does Allah make mention? Who does Allah mention the servants to? This uh, people should be deleted in the translation. Once again, the translation is from sunnah.com. Jazakumullah khaira. They tried their best. And uh, may Allah reward them with good. But with any action of, of the mankind, there's always going to be some type of deficiency. Now, that doesn't mean we throw away all of their good. But we try to correct that which we see needs correction. And the reason why I said people must be deleted uh, well, that's the answer to our question. 
Yani who does Allah mention us to or mention those people remember him to? Ibn Rajab ta'ala, he said about the statement of Allah, Fadkuruni adhkurkum and remember me, so I will remember you. He said, that remembrance of Allah of his servant, it is him praising his servants in the highest station, highest gathering between among, among the malaika, among the angels. So Allah makes mention to us, inshallah, you know, we hope, we're hopeful that we'll be among them. May Allah make us among them. He makes mention of us to the angels. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Why does Allah make mention of us to the angels? Why not anyone else or any other creation? Why specifically the angels? Huh? There's a benefit Shaykh Muhammad Ali Adam, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mentioned that this is an ishara, yani a, he's pointing towards, towards the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً That when your Lord said, and remember when your Lord said to the angels, that I'm certainly putting on the earth a khalifa. What did the angels say when they heard this? They said, قَالُوا They said, أَتَجَعَلُوا فِيهَا مَا يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُوا الدِّمَاء Are you going to place in the earth a creation who causes corruption therein and sheds blood and spills blood therein? While we, the creation, the angels, we all we do is glorify your praises and free you from deficiencies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded by saying, I certainly know that which you do not know. I know sir, that which you do not know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the angels of their question. And his statement, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. As, as if he's saying, look, look at my servants. This is what I know that they would do. I created them. And look how they're worshipping me, remembering me. SubhanAllah, reminding the angels of their statement. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Fa'ida latifa. From our Shaykh Muhammad Ali Adam, may Allah have mercy on him and grant him fair dose. Ameen. Naam. The Prophet, or rather, the Prophet relates to us that Allah Azza wa Jalla says, in khayrin minhum, in a better gathering. Does that mean the angels are better than mankind? Does that mean the angels are better than mankind? Because he mentioned a better gathering. So that, that could possibly mean that those who are in that gathering are better than mankind. So in the, in the gathering on earth. What's meant here in terms of gathering is that the angels are better than mankind from the aspect of their creation, them being uh, created from light, them being pure, them being obedient, completely obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? They never disobey Allah azza wa jalla. And they, are, they, they perform, they carry out those commandments that they are commanded with. Khairan, this is what's intended. As for if mankind were to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then without a doubt, they surpass the angels in that aspect, in that regard. Khairan. But in terms of creation, the angels being created from light and never being uh, afflicted with sins and najasa, whether it be hissi or ma'nawiya, then the angels are better from that aspect. But in terms of um, the ultimate goal, which is in terms of if, they, if mankind obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they surpass the malaika. Then they surpass the malaika. Now, uh, due to time, we will go to the next hadith. And wallah, ikhwani, akhwat, these ahadith have so many benefits. So many benefits. If we were to mention, you know, just a portion of it, right? Uh, it will take up, we won't have much time. So let's uh, continue with the hadith. The next hadith we have under authority of Abu Huraira, uh, Abu Dhar. Um, the authority on the authority of Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu and Abi Dharrin radiallahu anhu call Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqullahu ta'ala man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashra amthalihah wa azidu wa man jaa bil sayyati fa jaza'u 
سيئة مثلها أو أغفر ومن تقرب مني شبرا تقربت منه ذراعا ومن تقرب مني ذراعا تقربت منه باعا ومن أتاني يمشي أتيته هرولة ومن لقيني بقراب الأرض خطيئة لا يشرك به شيئا لقيته بمثلها مغفرة رواه مسلم طيب take a look at the translation we'll explain uh, whoever does a good deed will have 10 times that amount of blessing Allah Akbar this hadith shows us the vast mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla and how he facilitates for us the means to draw closer to him and receive his mercy Wallahu yuridu ayatuba alaykum Allah Azza wa Jalla he wants us he wants to accept our repentance. He wants us to get closer to him. Now, he wants for us paradise. And we can clearly see that from this hadith, that whoever does one good deed will have 10 times that amount of blessing. And he will give more. He'll get more. And whoever does one good deed, right, and he acts upon it, he performs it, he carries it out, he will only have one sin against him. And there's a possibility that Allah will forgive him. SubhanAllah, Allah wants us to enter paradise. Allah wants us to draw close to him. So whoever enters whoever enters the hellfire, sarahatan, whoever enters the hellfire, and may Allah protect us all, they truly deserve it. They truly deserve it. Now, because Allah has, has opened for us many opportunities to draw closer to him, to have our, our sins forgiven. Our sins forgiven. Now, so we should take advantage of it, take advantage of this. And implement his commandments as much as possible. طيب, uh, in the hadith, you find scholars, when they provide an explanation of this, like Imam Nawawi and others, they, say they, can't, they cannot fathom. They cannot fathom how can Allah come to him, running to him, right? These wordings. Like, how can Allah do this? They cannot um, understand its meaning. So what they say, and may Allah have mercy on them for these errors, they come to a conclusion that that these things are not possible. So we have to entrust its meaning to Allah Azza wa What does it mean that Allah is coming close, that Allah descends, that Allah ascends, etc.? Allah knows best. Allah knows the meaning. This is what they say. Okay, they make something, they do something called a tough wheel. They entrust the meaning to Allah Azza wa Jalla. But this is incorrect, ikhwani wa akhawat, when it comes to Allah's attributes and his actions. Rather, we affirm the meaning just as it is meant. Like what Ibn Malik, or rather Imam Malik Ibn Anas, he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, when he was asked about Ar Rahman wa al Arsh istawa, kayfa istawa? How did Allah rise above his throne? He said, Al-Istiwa ma'loom. That rising, the meaning in the Arabic language is known. Wal kayfu majhul. However, how it is done, that is unknown. So this is where we perform a tafweed, ikhwani wa akhwat. Not in the meaning of the word, but rather where? In how it is done. So we say that Allah draws near, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws near Allah Run, uh, comes to him at running Allah etc all these meanings he does that in a way that befits his majesty remember and memorize and study and convey this sentence Allah does X in a way that befits his majesty now so this is where we perform tafweed, not in the meaning of the word, but in how it's done. And this is what is affirmed by Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. And as our Shaykh Muhammad Ali Adam, he said, وَشَمِلَ التَّفْوِيدُ عِنْدَ الْخَلَفِ تَفْوِيدَ مَعْنَاهَا وَذَا حَيْفٌ يَفِي فَهُوَ مِنَ الْبِدَعِ فَالصَّوَابُ أَنْ يُفَوَّضَ الْكَيْفُ فَقَدْ دُونَ إِحَنْ He said that tafweed among the latter generations included entrusting the meaning of the attribute, the meaning of the attribute or action to Allah. And this is pure, complete oppression. This is the hayfun yafi, utter, complete oppression, because you're changing the meaning. You're, you, Allah said something and you're saying, no, it doesn't mean that. Rather, only Allah knows that was, knows what that means. No, that's oppression. It is from the innovations 
فالصواب أي يفوض الكيف فقط دون إحن The correct position is to perform tafweed of how that action is done without any opposition to that without any opposition to that now the next hadith we have on the authority of wa'na bi hurairah radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna allah ta'ala qal man adani waliyan faqad adantuhu bil harr wa ma taqarraba ilayya abdi bi shay'in ahabba ilayya mimma aftaratu alayhi wa ma yazalu abdi yataqarrabu ilayya bil nawafil hatta ahbabtuhu fa idha ahbabtuhu fa kuntu sam'uhu alladhi yasma'u bihi wa basaruhu alladhi yubsiru bihi wa yadahu alladhi yabtishu biha wa rijlahu alladhi yamshi biha wa in sa'alani la'utiyannahu wa la in istaadhani لأعيذنه وما ترددت عن شيء أنا فاعله ترددي عن نفس المؤمن يكره الموت وأنا أكره مساءته ولا بد له منه رواه البخاري أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم and you can read the translation here مسألة um, who is a wali here he mentions من آذى right he says من عاد لي وليا who is the wali the wali as mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون Certainly the awliya of Allah, they will have no fear, no grief. They'll feel no fear or grief. There are those who have iman. Those who have iman and taqwa. And this is why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, man kana mu'minan taqiyya, kana lillahi waliya. He is the one who has iman, the mu'min, and the one who has taqwa. So any one of us can be a waliya from the awliya of Allah. And it's not res- it's not restricted to specific people. Okay? We shouldn't think that the awliya of Allah are only a group of people who do X, Y, and Z actions. Right? La. Rather, anyone can be a wali of Allah. May Allah make, his, make us among his awliya. And having the walaya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has its benefits as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says هُنَالِكَ الْوَلَايَةُ لِلَّهِ الْحَقِّ هُوَ خَيْرٌ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ عُقْبًا He mentioned that in terms of يَوْمُ القيامة, uh, so the support, the walaya is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the true Lord and He is the best in reward and best in outcome This is from the benefits of becoming a wali of Allah Also from the benefits are mentioned in this hadith in this hadith Naam, hadith Qudsi, that Allah becomes his hearing and his sight and his hand and his foot. Naam, and the meaning here is that Allah guides these body parts to that which pleases him. That you are guided to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and pleases and what is pleased with. Naam, also from the benefits that when you make dua, he gives us, he gives you it. And if you seek refuge in him, he gives you, he gives you refuge. SubhanAllah. May Allah make us all among his own. Yeah. Ameen. The next hadith. Uh, naam. And a beautiful dua that we should all recite is, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika astaghith. Allahumma aslih li sha'ni kullahu, wa la takilni ila nafsi tarfata ayn. O Hayyu Qayyum, I seek assistance. I seek help in your rahma. I seek your rahma, assistance in your mercy. O oh Allah, rectify all of my affairs and do not leave me to myself, even for a blinking of an eye. This is a dua we should all recite on a daily basis, ikhwani wa akhawat, because you're asking Allah to protect you and to put you under his guardianship. Now, because if you say, Do not leave me to myself. Do not entrust me to my own soul. Leave me to my own soul, even for a blinking of an eye. That means you're asking Allah to protect you and to put him and to put you under his guardianship. After that, we have two beneficial, lovely hadith, uh, subhanAllah hadithan, where subhanAllah bihamdi, if you read it, honestly, it makes you cry. And it mentions, we'll just read the English or the Arabic as well. It says here, وَعَنْهُ 
قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لله ملائكة يقوفون في الطرق يلتمسون أهل الذكر <coughs> that Allah has angels who go about on the road seeking those who remember Allah Azza wa Jalla. فإذا وجدوا قوما يذكرون الله so when they find the people who are remembering Allah تنادوا they call upon Allah they call upon them and they say هلموا إلى حاجتكم they call to one another saying come to what you're looking for come to what you're looking for قال فيحفونهم بأجنيحتهم إلى السماء الدنيا طيب خلا I'll read the rest in English uh, and surround with their wings up to the lowest heaven he said that their Lord then asked them although he is best informed about them what are my servants saying they reply they are extolling and magnifying and praising and glorifying you O oh Allah Allah asks whether they have seen him and when they reply the angels they reply saying no indeed they have not seen you O oh Allah he asks meaning Allah how would they act if they had seen Allah to which they reply if they had seen Allah if they have seen you they would have engaged more earnestly in worshiping glorifying you and would have extolled you even more much more Allah then says what are they asking for the angels reply they are asking you for paradise Ya Allah, we ask for paradise. I mean, he asked whether they have seen paradise and when they reply, no, my Lord, they have not seen it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, how would they act if they have seen it, if they have seen paradise? And uh, they reply, if they had seen paradise, they would have been more intensely eager for it. Would they have asked, would have asked more earnestly for it? And would have had a greater desire for it, subhanAllah. He asked Allah Azza wa Jalla what they are seeking refuge from and to which they reply, meaning the angels, they seek refuge from hell, the fire. Oh Allah, protect us against the hellfire. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked, have they seen the hellfire? They say, no, my Lord, they have not seen the hellfire. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, how would they act if they have seen the hellfire? To which they reply, if they had seen the hellfire, they would have been more earnest in flying from it, yani running away from it, and fearing it. He, Azza wa Jalla, then responds, I call you to witness that I have forgiven them. Ya Allah, make us among them. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, make us among them. Ya Allah, we ask you for fear those of A'la. Ya Allah, we seek refuge in you from the punishment of the hellfire. Ya Rabb, La ilaha illallah. One of the angels say among them is so-and-so who does not belong to their number, but has come only for something he wants. Allah al karim the most generous. He said, they are people who are seated together and who sits with them will not be miserable. Ya salam. Ya salam. Look at the mercy of Allah. Look at the mercy of Allah, ikhwani akhawat. That even the person who did not, who is just simply with them, who is in their presence, they obtain a share of the mercy. Ya Allah. And this shows the virtue of having righteous companions and to be among the righteous. As Allah Azza wa commands us, وَاصْبِرُ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ And be patient. Make yourselves patient in being with those who call upon their Lord day and night, which, wanting His face. SubhanAllah bihamdi. May Allah Azza wa Jalla make us among these people mentioned in the hadith and allow us to be among the righteous. I mean, the last hadith that's mentioned here, uh, the hadith of Hanzala, where Abu Bakr, met me, meaning Hanzala, and asked, how are you Hanzala? And Hanzala said that he has become a hypocrite. Abu Bakr responded, praise be to God, what are you saying? I replied, we are with Allah's messenger and he reminds us of the hellfire and the paradise, making us almost seem to see them, to see it. Then when we go out and we leave his presence, we, we are dealing with our wives, our children, our properties and forget a lot of that. Upon hearing this, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, I swear by Allah that I have the same kind of experience. He and I then went to visit Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and I said, Hanzala has become a hypocrite, O Messenger of Allah. Of course, this is a statement of Hanzala. He asked, what 
I meant by that, and I replied, Messenger of Allah, when we are with you, when you are reminding us of hellfire and paradise and making us almost see, or making us almost see to them, making us almost seem to see them. Nam. Then when we go out and leave you, we have dealings with our family, with our wives, with our children, with our properties, and forget much. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu responded by saying, by him who, in whose hand my soul is, if you were to continue in what you have been engaged in with me and remembering Allah, the angels would shake your hands with you when you lie down and when you walk about. But alhamdulillah, there's a time for everything. He said this three times, i.e. when you're at leisure and when you are engaged in business. Of course, that's the... Uh, translation whoever made the translation they put that extra statements to clarify what is the meaning of that now nah, and this is this shows to have an iqtisad to be moderate in your actions of worship when some of the sahaba they said i will not marry women another said that he will not eat meat another said he will not sleep on a bed went to extremes in this in these regards uh, another said that i will not break my fast Prophet Sallallahu when he heard this news, he said, What is the wrong? What is the matter with the people who say such things? But I pray and I sleep, and I fast and I break my fast, and I marry women. Whoever turns away from my sunnah is not from me. Now that we should be moderate in our actions of worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make us among those who remember him abundantly. May Allah make us of those who follow the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and stick and hold firm to it. May Allah make us among those who learn the sunnah and spread it and teach it to others and make the sunnah and, and the Quran a proof for us all and not against us. May Allah azza wa jalla make us among those who remember Allah abundantly. Min al-dhaqirin wa al-dhaqirat. May Allah azza wa jalla gather us all in Firdaus al-A'la, the highest abode in paradise, without any reckoning nor punishment. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Allahumma qsim lana min khashyatika ma tahulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asik. Wa min ta'atika ma tubalighuna bihi jannatak. Wa min al-yaqini ma tuhawwinu bihi alayna. Masa'ib al-dunya. اللهم متعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا أبنا أبدا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا Please forgive me for going a little bit longer May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accept on everyone's behalf and reward you for your patience. Anything that was correct and is only from Allah Azza wa Jalla, and anything that was incorrect and is only from my ignorance and from the whispers of Shaytan. And Allah is free.